Joining us in the studio after a, an unexplained absence last week, Steve Millington, chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. We welcome him back to Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, what do they say? say? Happy wife, happy life? Yep, that's exactly right. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. We, we, did, we got a, a gift certificate that to, to go uh, spend a day up in Island Park, and uh, I do not play in that regard very well but that was an enjoyable day we just took off went up there um, the weather was the most cooperative that they had seen in weeks and it was just a delightful day they call it millington weather yeah <laughs> it worked really well i'll tell you oh man it was fun you know you're important when the sun obeys your commands right yeah that's exactly right we were talking during the break about donald trump and you know, from a standpoint of someone who's who's within the machinery of the Republican Party, I mean, Karl Rove was pulling his hair out about this last night on O'Reilly's program, and uh, you know, Rove is, is saying this is going to hurt us, this is awful, and and yet there's nothing they apparently can do to stop it. Well, the problem is that the Washington establishment, the elitists back there, who who find him offensive, is because what he's doing is he's saying what the voters out in the country want to hear. We're sick and tired of sending people back to Washington and then having them not do one cockeyed thing. They just, you know, they, they make all these promises, and once they get the key to get in the room, they forget what they are supposed to be doing back there. And they just fall in line and go along, and that's the way the deal works. And, and, and if you don't, you get punished. How, how though, can, can some of these people get it so wrong they keep thinking they're going to do it the way they've always. We were just looking at the TV monitor, and Scott Walker has like, oh, I don't know about this birthright citizenship yeah, repeal. Yeah, right. They, they, they. Is it that they're that out of touch that they don't have a, a lot of, you know, you had a picnic here a couple of weeks ago where the party leaders and the candidates all get to meet the regular folks. Right. Is there not enough of that going on? There isn't. And and let's talk about our picnic. It was last Wednesday night. And we had a great time, and and uh, I'm still smarting just a little bit over that deal. We sent invitations to uh, uh, our constitution, state constitutional officers and our congressional officers and all of our local leadership. Um, from a Twin Falls County standpoint, we had every ele- uh, Twin Falls County elected officer present. We had the, the uh, legislative officers from District 25, 24, and Burt Brackett from 23. Now, you mentioned Pete Nielsen was down here yesterday to this uh, meeting at CSI. He's also from 23, but Pete uh, and his uh, uh, wife have been had some health problems the last couple of weeks. I can understand why he didn't come down for the picnic. But we had one state officer show up, Lawrence Wasden, Attorney General. He showed up, the only one from our state delegation. Not one of our congressional officers showed up. No Crapo, no Rich, no Simpson. It's as though Twin Falls, to heck with you. You don't count. You're going to vote for the Republican anyway. We don't even need to come see you. Now, Crapo did have some town hall meetings. One was in Castle Ford. I think that's only one only one that he had in Twin Falls County. I could be mistaken on that. He was in Filer. Was and, he? And yes, but, to make a but couple of stops. But you know, all he would had to have done was just very carefully tweak his schedule and he we had 175 people to our picnic and and they they avoided us they just didn't show up and and so i say to myself you know um lawrence wasden you can continue to send me requests for money for your campaign the rest of you guys take my name off your cotton picking list because i don't mean enough to you to even come down to our picnic and I'm not the most important guy in the world, but I do run a little Republican Party here in Twin Falls, and and uh, and we don't even count. We don't even get on your stupid page. Now, we did have Steve Yates, the state party chairman. Uh, boy, he's been a good old boy, let me tell you what. he uh, uh, And he talked to us about the uh, national convention. He was in Cleveland uh, for the debate because the, the Republicans had their national convention there at exactly the same time frame. And so he visited with us a little bit about what went on there and what they're going to do and, and how they're going to go through the process of, of uh, primary elections next spring. And that was very fascinating to listen to him and, and see that whole thing come about. Very, 
He's very uh, knowledgeable and just handled it very comfortably. But so many of these other people, we just don't count. It's almost like they take us for granted. I, I remember years ago living in, a, in another state, and I remember one of the local Republican elected uh, state legislators literally came right out and said, I don't need the party any longer. Yeah. He, and, and, and he said, I can get elected in my district just by showing up and, and it, it makes on you election wonder. day. It, it makes you wonder if that isn't part of the problem, that they just have this, this uh, mentality that says, um, I don't need you. Watch this. And so they go do whatever they want to do. It just drives me, as you can tell, it bothered me a lot. <laughs> Not like it's difficult to find. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. 840. More with Steve Millington coming up. We'll take some of your telephone calls as well. It's 57. Uh, it was 54 earlier, so maybe a quick warm-up today. In fact, it was a little chilly outside for some of us. Uh, we've got more with Steve coming up. Save those telephone calls. Believe me, we have another long segment ahead of us. You're listening to Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Steve Millington joining us in studio. He is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. He'll be here with us uh, for another, oh gosh, 17 minutes. And if you have a comment or question for him, you can give us a telephone call at 736 0300. 736 0300. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're up to 58. We seem to gain a degree every couple of minutes. And uh, you're on the air uh, with Steve Millington. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Steve, if you think you're disappointed because Crapo and Simpson and, and Rich didn't show up at the picnic, uh, I was extremely disappointed that only Pete Nielsen of all of the area senators and representatives I didn't show up last night. You know, I, I did send out a personal invitation and to all of them, including Speaker Bedke, and uh, nobody showed up except Pete Nielsen. He drove all the way down here from Mountain Home. I was extremely disappointed because this was such an important topic, and you talk about being ignored or ignoring a severe problem. Steve, we really... Uh, need to chastise Hartkin and Clow. These people live right here in this area. Maxine Bell, uh, Kaufman, they should have been there. And I think, I think you need to chastise them as chairman if we're not being there last night. And like say, Patrick did send me back an email. He had another commitment to speak before suicide prevention last night. But I, I'd like your comments on that, why they're ignoring the, uh, this real serious problem of coming in with these unvetted uh, Syrian Muslim refugees. Thank you very much. Thanks. And I don't think that the, the issue is uh, solely and completely uh, concerning this refugee problem. Um, sometimes I think that it's, it's just their nature to avoid these kinds of uh, uh, highly inflammable the confrontational type issues. And so I don't, I don't think it's just uh, the refugee issue alone. I, I think uh, sometimes we find con convenient reasons to not participate because it's not going to be a pleasant moment. You're going to have to listen to people. You, you don't have to go in there and make a huge big statement and say, this is what I'm going to do and this and this and this. Go listen to what the people are saying. Ask more questions and find out where they are, what they're thinking, and ask, how should we resolve this? And, and then you're in a position where you have a little bit more information, you can be a little bit more knowledgeable, and you can, can find the, the, the answers to these questions. Now, I will say this, at our picnic last Wednesday, we had um, all of our local uh, elected uh, people, um, everybody from 24 and 25 and uh, bracket from 23, um, Pete Nielsen wasn't there, but... And, and I'm surprised that Pete drove down last night for that thing. Uh, good for him. Well, you know, he, I have been his opponent the last couple of elections. And, and uh, last go-round, it was so squeaky close that it was scary for both of us. <laughs> but but uh, Pete had a little accident um, uh, four or five weeks ago and spent a couple of days uh, uh, in the hospital recuperating. His wife just had uh, an ankle replacement surgery, so she's still recuperating. And good for Pete. Here's a question, and, and the, the caller referenced this. Maybe you as county chairman, and I think his point was you should be riding herd, but just how much, you know, I'll give you an example. 
Uh, Maxine Bell is one of the strongest personalities I've ever encountered in politics. She is. She, she, you know, I don't think she does. She'd be offended if we said she's tough. Um, I, I call her the uh, iron fist in the velvet glove. <laughs> yes. So, you know, she, she's, she's, she's well ingrained in her community, has been for decades, probably doesn't see a lot of serious opposition, at least from the Democrats. How many of them there are in, in, in that area? I, you can probably count them on one hand. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, I don't know how much influence you can have as chairman I mean, your job is fundraising. Your job is, you know, getting people out to vote and the like. But you're not their boss, obviously. Absolutely, I'm not their boss. But the, the, you do reach a point where you could just gently tell them this is, issue is it's gaining some traction and and it's going to become a a, a hot button. And and uh, in most of most of these kinds of issues, it isn't the, the silent majority. It is the vocal minority that carry the sway. And, and so e- even though we look at them and say, oh, it's just this small bunch of people, just, just, whoa, that's where you get movements started. That's where you get things changing. You made a good point on the first segment this morning when you said uh, these people who have find a considerable uh, 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 lack of cooperation from the CSI Board of Trustees, there are th- I think there's three of them up for re-election in uh, November. Well, let's see. We have September, October. Wow, we only got 60 days, so we have an election. Well, let's call it 70, 75. That isn't that far. And this this issue is not going to go away. And, and uh, you know, uh, somewhere between 500 and 800 solid, secure, dedicated, confirmed votes could replace three people on that uh Board of Trustees, that would be a huge, huge change in, in the direction. Oh, this program I was at last night, somebody said, what happens when you go to a meeting? Um, it was Vicki Davis, I believe. She said, when you go to a meeting, her experience has been, she said, the people who are sitting on a town board, uh, city council, or even in a legislative hearing, she said, they're doing a head count to see how many people are out there because the head count's a good indication. There's that old line that, if you get a you get a, a letter from constituent, it represents what like a thousand other views. Mm-hmm. So they're doing head counts and the like, and and so this this large body of people they may not be, you know, there's nearly fifty thousand people in Twin Falls, so only four hundred and fifty of them showed up at a Southern Baptist church to hear this pastor a couple of weeks ago. But who do those four hundred and fifty people represent? As, as as our caller just said a couple of minutes ago, you know, Jim Patrick had another commitment last night. He can't be everywhere at once. Correct. The same thing with members of the public. You, your kid has a soccer game, or there's something going on. But four hundred and fifty people represent perhaps they could represent forty five thousand. They they could represent a huge population of people. <clears throat> and, and keep in mind that the trustees for the uh, College of Southern Idaho are elected from Twin Falls County and Jerome County. Those two counties form the uh, uh, college district, I think, a community college district. So when we have an election, it's uh, Jerome and Twin Falls County that, that participate in that election of, of trustees. The, it would not be too difficult for a, a, a relatively small number of people to control the outcome of that election. And, the, and these um, trustees need to be a, a little bit more thoughtful about that. Um, it isn't just, this is a major issue, and we could see people uh, change on the, the board of trustee, but it's going to be four years before they get uh, voted again. I think it's a four or six. I don't remember. I think it's four. So, you know, they could be uh, uh, helping to control the uh, direction of the college for an extended period of time. And, and, you know, the interesting thing is that the college has compounded this thing by trying to change rules midstream. The, the uh, uh, who can speak at the meetings, you have to file two days ahead, you only get three minutes, you can't participate more than once every six months. That Leave that alone until this issue is completed. Then go back and review it and put that in place after. But what you're doing now is you're compounding the current issue with something that's not really relevant. Even people who may not agree with this group of, uh, of, of, of folks, these activists, the newspaper is a good example. Uh, they see it as just a matter of spite. Yeah. And, and, you know, when the liberal newspaper is saying, well, wait a minute, that means a lot of other people who've been sitting on the fence on this, 
uh, might not be sitting on the fence any longer. Right. And, and you know, it, 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 it's going to have – we just talked about Donald Trump earlier. There's a reason Donald Trump is attracting all of his attention is because he's willing to just get in somebody's face. Yep. And, and I think that – there's a lesson in that all the way down to the local political level. Clear to the politi- local political level. And and, and uh, one of the things when the Tea Party kind of uh, began uh, six or eight years ago, they wanted to be the, quote, grassroots element to fire things up. We are the people on the street. And and uh, they may have lost their way. I don't know that uh, that's pertinent at this point. But... They, if we go back to the people on the street element, there's an awful lot of folks who are upset with and disgusted with a lot of these. And, and uh, Trump's rise could very well have a pretty good impact on something as, as uh, uh, casual as the CSI trustee election. People can see that if we band together and we make enough noise, we can, in fact, make a change. And one of, they could do that. One of my Radio Lodge brothers, I think his name is Bill Post, was hosting a talk show, not not even a major talk show in the state of Oregon. But he got onto a lot of issues that really resonated with people, and he's now a state legislator because of that. And I, you know, I'm not saying that I have any interest whatsoever, and I, I'm going to make that clear, I've got none. But why did, why did he suddenly manage Be, to capture an election? With, because, because people want to hear somebody who will change the status quo. Now, everybody's screaming and yelling at Trump, especially the Washington establishment people. Oh, we can't do this. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, we can't do that. Well, I'm sorry, Washington establishment. You created the mess. You didn't do the kinds of things that people voted you into office to have done, and you're not doing them. So they're angry. They're upset. They're disgusted with you. And and so they're looking for somebody who... At least vocally and on the on the uh, uh, platform, the campaign stage, they're saying the right kinds of things, and and it appears that they're really not too interested in changing their mind or backing down. They're, they'll take on anybody. I mean, in the opening rounds of the debate last week, um, Trump took on uh, Megyn Kelly. It was supposedly going to sink him, but it didn't. No, it didn't sink him because a lot of people think that some of the mainline media people, and I don't call Fox News mainline media, they're way on the right side of this schedule anyway, but they it, it's who she represented and who she appeared to be uh, uh, focusing against. The whole tone of the rest of the debate changed when he fired that shot across the bow. Mm-hmm. It got much more manageable. He's smart enough to know, because he's been in media for 15 years uh, doing his own show, that uh, people have short attention spans. And even if you have a spat with Megyn Kelly, they're not going to remember maybe that you were a little almost threatening with her. They're just going to remember you told her off. Yeah, that's what they want to hear. And and if we're, if we're telling off, quote, the establishment, unquote, we don't care whether it's Washington establishment or the New York media establishment, we're done with you. We want something different, and anybody who will tell us that story has our attention. And, and uh, rightly or wrongly, that's the way it is. And, and the same thing holds true with Hillary Clinton. The Democrats, the, the Republicans created a, a, a structural system whereby they could select a, a, a nominee eventually. And, and uh, this year has been compounded because we got 17 people that want to be on the stage. The Democrats created a different structural platform. And it kind of fit exactly where Hillary Clinton wanted to to be. The problem was we had all of this stuff mm-hmm. show up, and mm-hmm. it just won't go away. I think it's it's very, uh, to, to be honest with you, I'm enjoying every bit of the Clinton meltdown. <laughs> they, they call themselves the Democrats, and yet they aren't very Democratic in the way they select a candidate. No, they're not. No, they're not. They've pretty much uh, already assigned the, the, the uh, position. And uh, the rest of you just sit down and shut up. Now, if she gets indicted, I guess that probably means even a Trump could win the presidency if he's the Republican nominee. If she gets indicted, that's going to change the political picture tremendously. It that would be oh that would be a real interesting. And even if she doesn't get indicted, this those kinds of things don't happen in a twenty four hour period. It's not quite the same as 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 finding the the, the culprit. In a, in a murder situation and, and throwing them in jail. And 
these kinds of things they just let evolve and run and we're investigating we're investigating trying to get every little piece of information and 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 uh, uh, items that they can use as evidence in a in a, a criminal or a, a jury proceedings do you know what I heard this morning the latest is that the uh, the server that that private company in Denver where she had all the email stored the server was in a bathroom oh swell <laughs> This this gets better by the day, yeah, doesn't it? Does. And you know, uh, we've been told, oh, she's the smartest person running in this race. Um, yeah, okay. Give me a break. Uh, uh, the smart a, the smartest yeah. person running in this race is Bobby Jindel, but he's not going to make the the top tier list right. either. So no, no one votes for the kid in the front row who knows all the answers. That's exactly right. We've got to, we've got to wrap up this uh this conversation with Steve Millington. First of all, thanks for coming back. Hey, thank you. It's 59, coming up on uh, 8.59. You know, it's amazing how fast I heat the temperature up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a really hot summer. <laughs> and an entertaining one as well. Hey, one more hour of the program, but first, Fox News at 9 o'clock.